Let's talk about the research process. This is part one. Let me start the lecture by going directly to the end. These are the steps of the research process. And if there is one slide that you should remember from this presentation, it is this slide. In this discussion, I'm hoping this activity will be a discussion so that things won't get too grainy. I am hoping to give you an overview of the components of the entire research process from conceptualization to conduct of research to what happens afterwards. I hope that by the end of the session, you will be more confident conducting your own research or at least be familiar with a roadmap so that you don't get lost along the way. Let's quickly discuss a few generic slides. So what is research? Research is defined by several um, definitions, but the constant terms here that you should look out for would be the terms systematic, scientific, and systematic, more systematic, and more scientific. And it poses to answer a question, to find answers to problems, new discoveries, truths, effects, but all of them revolves around the terms being systematic or scientific. We now have a more concrete definition of research and we also have two general types of research. You have your basic and your applied research. The scientific community and even the public nowadays are more acknowledging of applied research because this type of research have very practical and visible usability. That being said, while there are different impetus for doing research, the most important reason is, of course, to make life better. Now, for doctors, the main goal should always be to improve the lives of patients. This could be in the form of determining the magnitude of a health problem, determining factors associated with a health problem, determining appropriate interventions in the form of evidence-based medicine, and even evaluating an intervention, such as what you do in clinical or drug trials. Is research difficult? Definitely. The ability to do research is acquired slowly, only by active participation, not by reading or dreaming about it from the works of others. There is no substitute for an inquiring mind or the so-called research-mindedness. But is research impossible? Of course not. To guide us with the discussion, let us look at a hypothetical scenario. A certain virus has rampaged throughout Westeros and a lot of people have been infected in such a, a short time. The disease that the virus causes manifests primarily as cough. However, for a few months now, other complications have been recorded at your place of work, King's Landing General Hospital or KLGH. We will be using this throughout the discussion to provide hypothetical examples of each step in the research process, so please try to remember the details. If you see this logo in the succeeding slides, the picture on the right side, it means that the examples are based on this scenario. Now we go back to this framework from earlier. If you are all ready, we will dive in deeper into this framework, discussing each component in more detail and relating each component with our scenario, building on a story as we go along. We will also cite practical examples based on personal experiences as well as from literature. Let us begin, shall we? The research process is divided into two distinct phases. The research proposal phase and the field work or actually doing the research phase. The first phase is also the conceptualization phase, wherein you formulate the battle plan of the research and write them up neatly into a research proposal ready to be approved by the technical and ethics reviewers. The second phase is the action phase, wherein you go out into the real world and harvest your data, analyzing them and making use of your results. As you can see, the red broken line delineates the five steps in phase one and the four steps in phase two. Now let's discuss the steps in phase one, starting with number one, identifying the research question. At this stage, you need to answer the question, what is the research all about? 
Topic selection is very important. You need some baseline knowledge or expertise in order to study a certain topics. Now, these are the quote-unquote topics you know. You also need some level of interest in the topic because if you don't care about the topic, it would be brutal to conduct research on it. This falls under the quote-unquote topics you love. And finally, you need to care about the things that other people care about. Otherwise, you're just doing research for your own benefit, which is a bad way to look at research, or at least at a scientific research. Now, this falls under the quote-unquote topics your audience cares about. Often, a research topic is a product of circumstance. Now, when COVID hit, everyone did not know anything about it. So researchers were tasked to know more about the virus, presumably to figure out what's going on in order to help everyone else out or because you know their superiors acquired them to or um, because they just want to look smarter on, on Twitter, for example, or in TikTok. Now, topic selection should lead to the so-called research question which is often stated as a question on what is your topic all about? A sample research question from our scenario would be what are the manifestations of the virus seen in Westeros? So that's a very specific research question. What's the significance of this research question? We need to understand how the virus presents so that we can recognize it quickly. And another significance would be to help quickly manage our patients in King's Landing General Hospital. The next step in phase one is conducting your review of related literature. RRL is a synthesis of literature leading to the wider context of the topic. It also shows how your proposed study supplements the research that have already been done on your topic. While I place this step as step two, this step should actually be conducted regularly during the entire research process. Now, when searching for journals, you make use of search engines, but preferably scientific databases and indexes, such as PubMed or Medline. You can also make use of publicly available datasets, such as those from your uh, country's stat um, statistical board, or in this case, the Philippine Statistical Authority. Watch out also for articles from predatory journals or non-peer-reviewed sources. Search syntax and the proper use of Boolean parameters, such as and, or, are also very important. Now, scientific searching is different from your usual Google search. You really need to learn this extensively. But I'll give some examples later. Once you have some related literature, quick or critical appraisals should be done to assess the validity and usability of a found evidence, as well as to determine how strong the evidence is, if it is actually useful for your actual proposal. Now let's go to our scenario. For our scenario, I tried to use the search terms virus and the boolean end plus Westeros and then end and then I'm putting it in close open and close parentheses signs and then the boolean or and then symptoms. Now, if you move the, if you move the different boolean parameters or arrange the sequence of um, terms or arrange now for our scenario, here are our hypothetical review of related literature findings. Now the virus was first detected beyond the wall. It is airborne, primarily affects the elderly. It manifests primarily as cough, but a few cases manifested with chest pain or anemia. And another finding is that the pathophysiology of the virus has not yet been documented. So please take note of these related literature as we found from quote-unquote previous studies, at least for our scenario. After doing your initial review of related literature, the next step is formulating your research problem and objectives. 
We already have our background question or our general topic, but our topic is still very broad. There are a lot of things that can be asked about the virus. So in research, what we need to do is focus. It is impossible to answer everything, but we can probably answer something. This focusing of the research is called defining the research problem and objectives. This step is arguably the most important step in the entire process. This step anchors the entire research into what is important and what is not. Everything that you will do after this step is going to be rooted in what you write here. So when you submit your manuscripts for publication or presentation, the reviewers will always look into your objectives and assess whether you were able to answer them completely and correctly. Again, this step is arguably the most important step in research. So take your time with this step and make sure you get this right. The general objective identifies in broad terms what is to be accomplished by the study, while specific objectives identify the focus parameters that need to be measured in sequential manner in order to answer the general objective. At this stage, you should also learn the general characteristics of research objectives. Now, research objectives should be smart or specific, measurable, achievable or attainable, realistic, and time-bound. For our scenario, let's assume that we want to focus our study into the research question, are there non-cough complications of the virus? This research question can be rephrased into the general objective to describe non-cough complications of the virus at King's Landing General Hospital, let's say, in July of 2022. The specific objectives could be as follows. To determine the characteristics of patients with non-cough complications of the virus, another objective would be to determine the clinical history of patients with a non-cough complication of the virus, and yet another specific objective could be to identify the signs and symptoms of patients with a non-cough complication of the virus. As you can see, all of the specific objectives revolve around our general objective about non-cough complications. Here's a real-life example of a published study with its statement of research question and general objectives as well as its specific objectives. Here are some tips. When writing your objectives, use action words such as to determine, to describe, to compare, to evaluate. However, please separate your methodology from your objectives. Do not just list your methodology in your objectives like to perform a survey of or to interview, so forth and so on. Rather, indicate in your objectives why you are doing your methodology, answering the question, why should I interview, so on and so forth. The next phase in the process is the formulation of the research framework and variables. Frameworks are important for the researchers to concretize what they really want to do in the research. You'd be surprised how often I encounter student proposals who can't operationalize their framework. This is a sign that maybe the researchers have a vague idea for their research, but they have not fully conceptualized the entire scope of their study yet. Conceptual framework is a model that serves as the basis for investigating the particular research problem. Operational framework is usually a schematic diagram on the interrelationships or links or patterns among the different variables that you deem to be integral to the research problem being investigated. Hypotheses and propositions are statements that summarizes possible conclusions of your study. These are usually stated as null and alternative hypotheses and are often used in randomized control trials. Knowing your research variables by heart is another crucial step in the research process. You should be able to identify all your research variables or what specific data are you collecting in your research. You should be able to define each variable clearly and you should also be able to describe what type each variable is. This is where the concepts of continuous versus discrete variables or 
nominal versus ordinal versus integer versus ratio variables or even dependent or independent variables come into play. Remember that in our review of related literature, we noted cough, chest pain, and anemia as possible non-cough manifestations. For this framework, we are using the framework the virus causes pulmonary, cardiac, and or hematologic manifestations. For our study variables, we are using the typical demographic data such as age, sex, residence, and we are also adding variables such as medical history, physical exams, and laboratory findings. Any comments on the framework or variables from our scenario? If you look at our objectives from earlier, labs is not included in our objectives. So at this point, let us update our objectives to include laboratory findings, particularly cardiac and hematologic laboratory findings. Remember my previous example on, on objectives? This is the operational framework that they used for that study. As you can see, the relationships of all the variables that were identified in the specific objectives are shown in the framework. It is also good to provide a short narrative explanation of the operational framework. Let's end this video here. For part 2, we will be discussing the steps in constructing the research methodology. See you there!